Hello there and welcome back to my workshop. It's been a while and it's good to be back. And uh, our new project is going to be another tool tote. I know I just made one not too long ago, but uh, during my research phase in making that tote, I saw another design that I really like, so we're going to make another one. Let's have a quick look at the first one I made. And that's this one right here. It's American chestnut from a reclaimed barn board. And uh, it's really nice. It's got splayed sides and it has a compound dovetail angle joinery here. Very difficult to do. And uh, I think it turned out really, really nice. And uh, here's another one I made, just identical to it, out of pine. You can see that here. And you can really see the dovetails here. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of work. So, our new project is going to be a little bit different. And uh, to show you that and what it's going to look like, of course, let me show you first the prototype out of cardboard like I always do. And here it is. And you can see it's quite different. It's got these ellipt elliptical curves here. It's got a radius here. There's a curve on the handle. And when I made this mock-up and looked at it, I noticed right away we've got all these curves up here and down here it's simply a plain rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this a little bit and instead of a straight edge along here I'm going to put a little curve that goes along here like this and I think that's going to bring it all together. So that I think is going to be pretty neat. Um, let's look at the species that I'm going to have to work with here. I'm going to be using cherry that's readily available here in uh, Pennsylvania. And uh, I was lucky enough to find these thinner boards at my local woodcraft. They're only uh, half an inch thick, and these sides are going to be 3 eighths of an inch thick. So it won't be uh, too much work at all for me to bring this down to the thickness I need. And then for the ends and the bottom, I was at my local sawmill, and I found a nice long nice wide board that I need. This is just a piece of it. And uh, this is right now about a fat three quarters of an inch thick. And what I'm going to be doing is planing this down to, uh, to the half inch that I need. So that's the project. Let's get started.
All right, we have our boards planed. Let me just uh, tell you what you saw there. This is our half inch boards, and uh, you saw me jointing and planing the one side flat. Then you saw me thicknessing, cross grain, and then you saw me doing the other side and smoothing that with my number seven and also my number four smoother. And then for my much thicker boards, these were almost seven eighths of an inch thick. You saw me jointing and smoothing the one side, and then you saw me smoothing the other side. What you didn't see was me thickness planing these thicker boards on a power thickness planer. I have no qualms about using a power tool to uh, save me time and do some of the heavy lifting. Now, let me show you a plane that I find very, very useful here. I don't know if I explained it to you before or showed it to you before, but uh, you've seen me use it. It's a number four, but what I've done here is I simply put a heavy, heavily cambered iron in there. This is an eight inch radius right there. So it's more like a scrub plane. And then what I did was on the, uh, the frog here, I moved that back just a little bit so I've got more clearance for the shavings, the thick shavings that I'm gonna get. And uh, let me just show you how this all goes together. Adjust this real quick. Well, that'll do it. Okay, I just picked up this piece of scrap from the basement. Happens to have a, a rabbit on it, but let me just show you how quickly this removes material. Now that rabbit that rabbit is now gone. I mean really for removing a lot of material in a hurry uh, this plane is really useful here in my shop. So uh, I think that's it. Let me check my script. What else do we have to do here? That's it. Okay. So, on to uh, more things in just a moment. Lots of progress made here. I've got my sideboards, they're now at 3 eighths of an inch. I've got my bottom board here, that's half inch. And then I have my two end boards here cut. These will be the ends. And uh, this one, you saw me cutting and planing to its final width. And I didn't show this, but uh, I then made a very precise 90 degree cut on this one end. It has to be very precise because I'm going to be using dovetails along here to join the ends to the bottom. So how do I make a precise 90 degree cut like that and not have tear out along the back here? That happens with hand saws. You always have tear out on the exit side of the cut. So let me show you how I did that on the second end. First thing I'm going to do is just make a square reference mark across the end. Now I'm going to extend that. Where in my head?
and then do the other side. Okay. Okay. And normally I would make a, uh, a knife wall, but I'm going to make a chisel wall because I'm working with hardwood and uh, it works better this way. And here are our end cuts on our boards. Really nice and 90 degrees and no tear out whatsoever. Works really well. Now, let's talk about the curves on our ends. And uh, here's a curve here. This is an ellipse. And we have to be able to draw an ellipse. So let's draw an ellipse. Take two push pins, actually I'll put it here and here, and a loop of string. This is just a, a spring clip to adjust the size of my loop. Put that here like that, and then I take a pencil. Trace it around. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now I did that rather hastily, but you can see you can uh, rather easily make an ellipse. Now I need to make a measured ellipse because this curve is one quarter of an ellipse. It is exactly ten and three eighths of an inch long and six and a quarter inches wide. So I need to make a measured ellipse. How do I do that? Well, I take one half the length and square that number and then I take one half the width 
and square that number and I subtract the smaller number from the larger number and take the square root of that number and uh, the number I come up with happens to be 4 and 5 30 seconds and uh, let's see here on the layout here in the layout here you can see the length of my ellipse here is the width of my ellipse and right here is that dimension I mentioned 4 and 5 30 seconds and that is the spacing for my loop so I take that and I get my loop adjusted and that has to be adjusted so that the extent when it's pulled taut touches my layout lines. See that there? Mm -hmm. Now all I have to do is trace that around. Like that. And that is exactly the size of the ellipse that I need. Now, let me just show you here. I cut that out, and now I've got templates. I can use either one as a template for drawing these out on my, on my end boards. And you can see here that that fits rather nicely in there. So that's the measured ellipse. And we have both of our end boards marked here. I'm hoping you can see my pencil lines. I know it's not that easy on this dark cherry, but hopefully you'll be able to follow along. So what we're going to be doing now is cutting out these curves, but let me show you this before we do that. I've marked my through mortises, and that's what the handle will be going through on each of these end boards. So they are very clearly marked and scribed. It's easier to do it now when I have these reference edges for my wheel gauge and my squares rather than doing it after I've cut those reference edges off. So uh, that's set there. Uh, what we're going to do now is sandwich these and saw them out together. I'm using double back tape Now what I'm going to do is clamp this in my vise. And my curves are sawn and shaped. You saw me using my coping saw for rough cutting, and then I used a coarse rasp for shaping, followed by what I call a float. It's a finer file, and they work really nicely. And then I used my 
poor man's spindle sander here, and that's simply a soup can with uh, double back tape and a couple grits of sandpaper to do final smoothing. I would have liked to have used my spoke shave, but uh, my spoke shave has a flat bottom and it's only good for real shallow curves. For the tight radius curves on this ellipse, uh, it just wouldn't work at all. So uh, the next step now is going to be cutting off the rounded tops here and shaping them and then chopping out our mortises and getting ready for our handle. And cope sawing and rounding over this end, I think you saw, was pretty simple. But what's going to be more challenging are these mortises because they are through mortises and uh, the tenons on the end of my handle are going to be visible when this is finished. So these lines have to be nice and sharp. So what I did was I deepened my scribed lines with a chisel and removed some of the material and now I'm going to use my drill press and hog out a lot more of the material and clean it up with a chisel. And our ends are finished. We've got our curves, we've got our mortises, and when I stack these two together, they line up perfectly. 
So I'm very, very happy with that. Now let me share with you a little problem I had off camera. Uh, before I went to the drill press to uh, hog out all this extra material, I decided to deepen my mortises a little bit more with my hammer and chisel. And as I was chiseling away, I hit my chisel too hard and I caused a hairline split. Yes, right along here. Goes from here to there. And uh, wasn't happy about it at all, but here's what I came up with for a solution. I got some CA glue, water thin CA glue, and I put a couple drops right in here, right where the split was, and it immediately wicked into the split through capillary action. And I could see it, you can see it here, coming out on the end grain. So it completely filled that split. So I gave it another drop or two, gave it some time, and then I clamped it together really, really tight, and I think we're going to be fine there. So close call, and uh, this discoloration here, when I apply a finish, I think is going to disappear. So anyway, uh, that's that, as we say. Um, that's it for uh, show number one. In show number two, what we're going to do is uh, start right away on the dovetails that join our ends to the bottom. Then I have to make the sides and decide how they're going to be attached. And we have to make the handle. And we also have to come up with a finish. So all that and more in episode two. Thanks for stopping by and see you next time. Wasn't that great?